This corn right here, well, I'm holding that up because all of it is completely flattened. We do know that St. Joseph County's Metro Homicide Team has taken over this investigation. Just to give you an idea of where we are on Main Street, you go a couple blocks that way, you're at the river. One block over, you're at uh, the Battelle Center. This massive investigation is still ongoing with dozens of witnesses being interviewed and a huge crime scene being processed. The home at the center of all this, I want to step out of the way and show you. It's 520 Burdett Street. That is the home where officers went this morning to serve this search warrant. And hopefully you can see on the camera, we have some snow flurries still falling here and that is starting to build up on the road. I want to show you here, these are the Harbor Point condominiums just near the lakeshore. You can see some damage already being done. Those garages over there and this car, if you look at it, just a few inches away probably from having some uh, water get inside. The roads is really what's going to be the problem as Matt was saying because it is slick here. So the mailboxes here really give a good illustration of how much snow actually fell here. They're seeing more and more patients and what that translates to is simply that the hospitals are running out of room. We do know that he is a man in his 50s but they wouldn't say specifically what part of the county he lived in. Standing in front of Peg's super popular breakfast place here and if you note there is a sign on the door it reads in part our dine-in services are closed until further notice. Judge Amy Coney Barrett was spotted outside of her South Bend home this evening and it appears that she's still here. I want to though take you guys in just give you a live look at what's going on right now because there was a major sort of blow up that just happened. Buddha judge was supposed to attend a get out the vote rally this evening in Dallas, but diverted back here to South Bend for this announcement. You can see over my shoulder there the van that was pulled from this pond is still on scene. It was actually very peaceful and, and passionate as well, and that's very much sort of in contrast to what we've been seeing around the country. The debate has been raging around the U.S. Postal Service and whether it's equipped to handle the strain the November elections will put on the system. I'm going to go vote in person. And why is that? <laughs> oh, come on now. You cannot trust any of this nonsense. We wanted to know how long would it take for mail-in ballots to get to their destination or if they'd get there at all. <laughs> We contacted the St. Joseph County Clerk's Office to see what size envelopes they use to mail ballots and how much they weigh. Then we rented a post office box at the same post office the Clerk's Office uses. After all that, we took 100 envelopes and stuffed them each with three pieces of paper to mimic the weight and numbered each one. After a lot of licking, labeling, and stamping, we were ready to send them out. We sent some of them home with members of our staff and the rest we mailed out from places across St. Joseph County. We started in Lakeville, then over to Walkerton, up to North Liberty, New Carlisle, South Bend, Granger, Mishawaka, and Osceola. We checked our P.O. box less than a week later and all 100 envelopes made it to the post office. That was welcome news to St. Joseph County Clerk Rita Glenn, whose office is expecting mail-in voting like they've never seen before. There's definitely concerns, and the voters are concerned also. Yeah, You guys have been getting calls? Oh, <laughs> inundated with calls. Glenn says her office has already received thousands of applications for absentee ballots. During our 15-minute interview, 33 more came in online. She says people have grown increasingly concerned about whether their vote will be counted if sent by mail, and fairly so, but she wants to assure people that the post office is working with them. We've tried to keep um, our communications open with the local post office. We constantly call them if we have an issue. We got a little hotline that's saying, hey, what's going on here? But what we've also done is... Um, have worked with the post office. Glenn says it's important for voters to be informed about dates and deadlines if voting by mail and not waiting until the last minute. As for claims made by President Trump about widespread fraud in mail and voting, Glenn says not in her office. I don't care what your party affiliation is. You took an oath and you have a job to do. Let's get it done. After someone dies, their body goes into a prep room like this one at the Kineski Funeral Home in South Bend. We go make a removal. We take a mask. We take a gown. That's where Robert Kineski has been preparing people for their funerals for 55 years. He says they've had busy stretches before, but the past weeks have been something else. This is definitely a, a rush. Yeah. A lot more than usually back here. Sometimes you get three, four, but we've had up to seven and eight now. 
The fifth generation funeral home had about 45 deaths last month. That's almost double what they normally see. They say roughly half of them died from the coronavirus, and at one point they had 12 bodies inside their building at one time. It seems like every day we were getting two or three or four calls per day. And for us, you know, that's a lot of work and, and a lot of stress. <laughs> and we're all pretty tired, and it, it's been going nonstop the whole month of November. The story is the same in other funeral homes as well. Palmer told us they were so busy they couldn't give an interview today. McGann Hay Funeral Home told us nearly all of their deaths had been from the virus, the youngest just 31 years old. Have you been getting nights where you may be getting several calls? Oh, yeah, we had two last night after I went to bed. Were they both COVID? Both cope, right? The hospitals say they haven't had to use their refrigerated trucks as mobile morgues yet, but the funeral homes say they're constantly getting calls to pick up bodies. I have had hospitals call me uh, as recently as last night and tell me, please come right away because we just don't have any room left in our morgue. While death is their business, both homes say they wish there was less of it because so many of them didn't have to happen. You know, it's a really sad situation where we're, where we're at now and how bad things are. And you kind of wish things would have been a little bit taken more seriously. It was a race against the clock as first responders worked to rescue four people trapped inside a van that plunged into a Mishawaka retention pond. When crews were called out shortly before 3 o'clock, they found the van completely underwater. I saw one of them pulling someone out, or so pulling something out. Boats and dive teams were deployed, eventually pulling three children and one adult from the vehicle. All were taken to area hospitals with serious injuries. When I went down there and couldn't see the vehicle but saw the tracks, it was obvious what had happened. The scene attracted several onlookers, many saying they were shaken by what they saw. You can see it in the reaction of these people as what appears to be an infant child is pulled from the frigid waters. It, it was absolutely horrible and I'm shaken by it. William Martin works just 100 feet away from the scene. He says he felt helpless as he watched on in disbelief. There was little to be done. I mean, the responders were there in cold weather gear and, and obviously the ones doing their job and effective, but it was just uh, somber to say it mildly. Many bystanders hoping for the best after hearing that children were pulled from the car. It's making me thoroughly think about it because my son's van is just like that one, so I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, that could be my kids or that could be my son or, or and his kids. St. Joseph County's fatal crash team is now investigating, spending this evening trying to figure out how that van ended up in the pond. While it's unclear if the icy roads played a factor, Martin says more should have been done. I think it's inexcusable that the road was as slippery as it was. And if that was the cause of the accident, then I think there's blame to be assigned towards how we prioritize uh, care.